Hi everyone, Leon here, and in today's video I'd like to show you a new library by Orchestral Tools. It's not actually quite new, but it's uh, something that I haven't ever tested out and I've always wanted to try. Um, I think it's pronounced Babel, or Babel, or something like that. It's basically one of the creative sound packs that Orchestral Tools put out, um, based around studio vocals and, and advanced um, aleatoric or unique vocal textures that's all i know i've heard some demos of it and i've always wanted to um try it out but um only until now i i've I have, i've got a bit of time and i wanted to dedicate this uh stream and video to trying things out as a first look um so if you see comments coming through from here and there um this is also being live streamed to my twitch uh so that's twitch.tv forward slash leon ross music um and if you like this video or anything, feel free to head over there and I'm streaming most days. Enough self-promotion. Let's get into this. Let's see how this goes. So this is just my basic template. I'm going to just disregard all this stuff for now and load up Sign Player into just MISC. And here we are. Here we are. So it is one of the creative sound packs recorded at the T-Rex Classics. So I don't know where that is. That might be a new hole or room that that um orchestral tools uses i've um also got the amber down tuned string quartet which is quite dry and beautiful and to be honest i use that in basically every track these days <laughs> so i'll probably do another video on that but if it's in the same space i'm very interested so first thing with this sign player that you may notice um is that in the library tab Obviously, this is where our libraries are. Um, you can hit settings and that will tell you where it's installed to. Um, but yeah, this is a dedicated different sampling engine uh, as opposed to the standalone uh, contact or what Spitfire has done recently. Um, and through recent updates and everything, Orchestral Tools has really, really um, upped their game and made a robust, amazing player. Um, I'm getting alerts. Hang on. Yeah, so anyway, so... What you'll see when you install your library through my licenses or store, I was discussing this off stream just before, um, or on stream, but not in the recording, that I both like, but I'm wary of the idea um, of a VST plugin having um, a link to your, to your account and to be able to make purchases within the VST plugin. I haven't seen that before in anything else, so I'm curious to know. Um, I accept it, and I want to, you know, I'm fine with it, but I'm curious to see where this goes because it, it is um, nice in terms of how well rounded and and uh, integrated everything is, but uh, also at the same time, I'm a little wary of the fact that it is all integrated and not through the, the standalone orchestral tools website. Anyway, so when you do buy the library. And install it. Um, you can install it all through the app. There's this download button here. Um, and once it's installed, you'll be greeted with, you'll see the library within the library page. Um, and most of the libraries, like from the from the creative sound packs, are usually split up into two folders. It's the same with um, the Amber String Quartet. Um, it's it's uh, split up into the dry samples, so the clean stuff, and then the processed stuff. So that would be uh, for example, the um, things that orchestral tools have, have pre-assigned effects and baked in, um, like reverbs or creative granulized sounds. Um, and usually these are, um, you know, they, they have multiple microphone positions that have different effects on them, which is pretty cool. So anyway, this is the first look. I haven't ever touched any of this before. So let's start at the top in the voices dry tab with O1. Babel Ensemble, Babel, or how have you pronounce that? Let's have a listen, see how this sounds. So first patch is the sustains, let's see. Interesting. I love it. C 
So this is something I've been searching for, and I've even done sampling sessions with my uh, composer, co-partner, um, like business partner. Um, we've done sampling sessions with a similar um, vocal technique to this, inspired by things like Arrival or um, or Hans Zimmer's um, Dark Phoenix soundtrack, especially with the Dark Experiments. Um, there's this eloquent magic um, in how like the rhythms will drift in and out of each other. And that was a direction that that um, we had also when we were doing these recording sessions. Not not for, for Babau, uh, but for the, the stuff of a similar technique, you know. Um, so that is extraordinary. So is it perhaps a variable speed, depending on the modulation wheel, maybe? No, it, seem, it seems like... No, it's, it's okay. So it seems like every note has a slightly different speed, which uh, which gives you the drifting of, of uh, speed differences. So... Or maybe like... But I, I love how they drift in and out of rhythm with each other, you know? It's very dry, which is good because we can process it ourselves. Um, but yeah, so you'll see that there are two mics here. If we solo the room mic, how does that sound? Yeah, that's that's really really flexible. What I might do, just because I used to do this um, for the, for also the um, the amber <clears throat> the amber uh, quartet, I would normally put this in the Teldex stage, uh, just because I'm familiar that that orchestra tools often records there, um, and the template I've got usually is integrated with that in some way. So I may put that on because it's a very dry library and I'd like to hear a bit of a bit more room to it. So this is with a bit of a bit of the Teldex stage. Beautiful. All right, that's I'm I'm really really into that. That's a, it's a particular technique that I've been looking for for a lot. Anyway, so that's this particular morph, morph um, M and knee um, articulation. Let's see what the R's sound like. If this is like a static sort of thing, and um, yeah. It's a bit quiet. I might have to like boost it just a touch. I just I love these mics. What I, what I really like about this is that there's a lot of fidelity within these samples. So there's there's a lot of definition and, and detail within every note. Um, and, uh, and obviously because it's vocals as well, vocals, you know, technically would have a, a high amount of information within a single note. But it seems like every note has a, a slight different definition. Beautiful. So that's a that's quite a nice switch on um, other libraries that do a 
traditional vowel of R or A or M and all that. Um, let's move on. Oh, interesting. So this articulation is not the traditional just mm sort of sound. It's actually got a bit of a, a bit of a um a resonance to the voice. Beautiful tender sound, but it's also got a a lot of unique attributes to it. I, I love it. If I do a cluster down low, is this going to sound yeah, interesting? I like it. Ah, or ooh, or how would you pronounce that? I mean, I guess this is not meant to be a, a big choir library. It's supposed to be a selection of small amount of players or singers and um, focus on the, the um, intricate details of each vocalist rather than the collective chorus of a whole choir. So I can see why it might not hit to a really loud dynamic at times. It's sort of... Yeah, so it, actually it says it here, it's it, that, so, but definitely by, by design, and it goes to an MF. Which is perfectly acceptable for, for um, the, the function of, of how, like, what, what this library can do um, and how it can slot into to your compositions. So, very interesting. So this is the same articulation but with bends. Oh. As a soft layer, how... How incredible is that? That's just magical. Absolutely magical. This can provide such beautifully unique textures for your compositions. My god. And then we have whispers. So what's this like? <laughs> That's amazing. I legitimately got shivers on the back of my neck from that. Oh, that's weird. It's like at the back of my neck. The mix is like it's behind you. What enchantments are you putting on me? What what enchantments are you casting? Oh my god. That is... Whoo! That is unique. God damn. Anyway, so that that's the ensemble patch. Jesus Christ, that's amazing. That is incredibly unique. See, it, it's... And this, this has been highlighted in, in other reviews, not necessarily of this library, but of orchestral tool libraries of as of as of late, that they are 
and a big reason why I'm I'm a, a, a big advocate for what Orchestral Tools is doing and, and supporter of everything that's moving into the future. Um, Orchestral Tools is 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 placing a lot of innovative, small or large new techniques that is groundbreaking that pushes certain techniques forward into the future, like like this whisper thing or the the morphs and the weird bends and stuff like that. I, I have never found this sort of library or these sort of articulations in anything before. I mean, we're only on the first patch, but already these are these articulations are just so useful in creating sort of just specific idea that I, that doesn't exist anywhere else. Um, phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. I, I I can't get over how how amazing that is. So let's um load up the soprano patch because it looks like there's a lot of stuff. Wow. This is like this was um uh like a hundred dollars for me, and you get so much stuff, so much stuff, incredible. So anyway, um. I'm wondering if there are any legatos or if you can turn on a legato for like a Right. So it looks like there's no legato, but that's that's okay. The vibrato was interesting. Because it seems like it's only, it actually only smoothly goes to vibrato when you're at a high dynamic. And since this is soprano, let's go like really high. Just, just wow. I'm kind of speechless from that. So, anyway, that's... Whew, that's beautiful. See, I, I like that there is such a smooth transition from... It's, so, it's not even fully non-vib, but... But it, it is it's close to that. Like, it's a, it's a closed vibrato. And this might be one of the smoothest transitions I've had from a non-vib or closed vib to full vib, as in vibrato. Yeah, it's very interesting because it's not just a dynamic change, it's also a, a timbral shift like a like a lift of of the timbre um getting a bit more nasally and a bit more um a bit more pronounced um yeah very fascinating Let's move on there's a lot of articulations here to go through and and just to clarify again i have never touched this library before. I just, I literally just installed it before starting this stream. Um, and so everything that I'm playing is the first touch, like the first, first interaction with this library whatsoever. So um, you're, you're seeing very unfiltered reactions to this library. Uh, let's do a different key. I will say like the, it is is it is very quiet, but that's intentional. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, this is a really, like, this is a master for textures. So M's, we sort of heard that stuff with the ensemble already. Yeah, these are phenomenal. Again, without the um, reverb, it's very dry, very dry, which is good because it, I, I do like it as dry and rather than like, um, ra rather than the only option is is with reverb because then, then you have the flexibility to put on your own processing. And I mean, that's also why they've got the processed patches, which we haven't even touched yet. Oh my God, there's so much stuff. And then we have the, the R, uh, sorry, the uh, U, the U bends. And I like that as well because it's not like a, like a sort of bend. It's, it's more, it's, it's super intricate. It's super like, just the tiniest bit, tiniest bit. I wonder what it would sound like if you did like a cluster, like a... Yeah, that works. That works. That's cool. That's very cool. All right, the Nini's. The Nini's. Oh, it's the Nini's. It's the journey of the knees. <clears throat> Get your knees ready. Oh my god. We got into the dissonant world. Let's not do that. Um, yeah, that is. I've I've been searching for that articulation and that sound. I've even gone as far as to try and um, record that uh, and program it into contact myself as well. And and that I didn't have much success to be honest. So this is oh, this is so fucking useful. Oh my god, so useful. All right, let's move on. I can't say enough good things about this, by the way, so far. There's, it's like, um, geez, it's, it's, it's incredible. So it sustains vowel morph. So I would assume that, what's this? Okay, so I, I assume that the, the mod wheel controls the morph. Oh, wait, no, it's, I think it's just a, it's just a automatic thing, so. That's just godsend. That is beautiful. I'm going to have so much fun with this library. Oh, gosh. See, this, this complements the Amber library as well quite, quite well. Um, you could use this in conjunction together. So this is the, the I vowel morph. Let's do a different chord. Um,
That's interesting. So I think this has like alternate rhythms. It it finishes its phrase and then resets. So like. Yeah. So that way, what, what I like about that though, is you can hear that there's a moment of space for breathing. So if you have this complex chord happening, it's not that trap of just a pad. You hear the space, the reset of the notes re-triggering. And it's smart because it allows the sample to re-trigger, but it also allows realism to make it sound like it's uh, breathing, to make it sound like there's actual life interacting within the, within the texture. There's all these intricate moments of starting and stopping. And, ah, goddamn, I love it. I feel like I'm on a beach taking a deep breath of air as the as the wind gusts through my hair. <laughs> Too bad I got a haircut yesterday because I would have still had long hair and been able to have the wind go through and everything. <laughs> this is beautiful. This is so beautiful. We got Mark Hato as well. I, I don't have much to say about that. It's just it's I, I can use all of these. These are just exquisite. Um Marcato's What? Velocity does different articulations. Oh, wait, I think it, it goes on like an alteration of two different articulations, so... That's lovely. And so we got the DDs. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. It sounds like they're smiling a little bit, you know? Like a bit cheeky, you know? Just a little bit. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Staccatos. Oh, there's a bit of delay with this, with the sample start. Oh, I'll, I'll show that, um, just so you can see it. I'll just do that so that you can see, um, so that you can see how much delay there is. Just to show that there is, because it, it's it, the input delay is is a bit strange. So it looks like there's a sixteenth note um, delay by the calculations on this, at least. Yeah, r roughly that. It, it, it's it's consistent enough though to be able to put an input thing, um, a a uh, um, track delay compensation. So that's okay. But if you're trying to play stuff live, that might that might th that might throw you off a bit. Um, but all good. Oops, why did I do that? Undo. There we go. Anyway, let's move on. So the staccatos, they're, they're nice, but the delay thing is a little bit hard to play live with. You can sort of, like, time it, though, to expect the 16th and then play the next note. But the articulation and the tone of of uh, the syllable is, is incredible. And I like the alteration where it cycles through it. Um, yeah, really, really cool. So I'm going to move on. Gestures. I didn't know that this was a part of the library. Gestures. So, ka, uh, karu. Kuro. Kuro, kuro. Kuro. So this thing is almost like phrases, but... Oh, so it's it's going up a semitone? Kuro, 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 kuro. Ah, it's going up a tone actually, so kuro, 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 
Yeah, that's lovely. That, that's actually usable because it's... That's interesting. Um, I see. I haven't heard another library do this as well, where you've got. Oh, actually, no. Maybe maybe I have. Um, where 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 you have like a full syllable difference, like, um, uh, I've got this sound that I made in contact. Um, and my hard drive is booting up, so. That's always fun. Um, I have a sound that I programmed where basically it, it does an interval, right? So it, it does a similar thing to this of, of like goes from one interval to a second interval, um, but, to, but the interval is applied to anything that you play it in. So, you know, you could go... Um, And you can play complex chords and it will always go to that interval destination. Um, but because it's it's not speed quantized, it takes its time to drift. And I like that. Um, but also it's because I didn't know how to do the time machine stuff or at least I haven't done enough uh, time into that patch to do it properly. But anyway, that's a bit of a di divergent um, divergence. But... Yeah, so I, I like patches that do this, that have interval differences because it allows you to creatively build chords that naturally swell and morph between notes. Like, again, with this. Um, it's fascinating. So I'm going to move on. So it sounds like all of these are a tone. Which is nice. It would be cool to see that, like, a... Um, like, oh, oh, you can't, oh my God. I, I literally was just about to request this. Oh my God. For fuck's sake, orchestral tours, you're geniuses. I was literally just about to ask this to have options like in modus where you can change the intervals. Ah, <laughs> oh, God. Killing me. Oh my god, that's amazing! God. <sighs> ah! That is so cool! That is so cool! Ah, shit. Um. Okay, now, now that sets it aside from any other library that has phrases in it or has like interval differences because you can set a slider. So uh, I don't think I've got one set up actually at the moment, but I could do... Uh, oh, all, all good. You could set up a slider or automate this independently. So you go... And you can build phrases with real transitions independently. And then you can do key switches to different... Oh, gosh. That blows me away. That blows me away. And the library is so cheap as well. Like, it has all these future functions that are so incredible. I'm just gushing over this right now. So, oh my god. I sound like an, an, an extreme orchestral tools fanboy, but... I mean, geez, they're really providing composer tools that are really super functional. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> let's move on. <laughs> that is just... I can't get over that. And then we have whispers. Oh, 
Jesus Christ, that's amazing. <laughs> and then uh, consonants. Wait, what? That is also something I don't think I've ever seen. And I, I would assume these are short consonants. Pepper Klimatebe? Pepper Klimatebe. Pepper Klimatebe. Pepper That's that's fucking hilarious. That's amazing. Yeah, so I, I believe that if you're Okay. Um I believe if you're using this in conjunction with other patches, it may provide a attack of your consonants or I don't fully really know how how using consonants um, works and like how how you would use it appropriately, but I do know that that there are techniques where you do use consonant like whispers and things um, over the top of like a really loud big ensemble of people, and then you put these consonants or consonant longs through a wide reverb or something that spreads it out like like a lot, then um. You place that in the mix and it just sounds like a fucking huge amount of people singing this one thing at once. Um, uh, I, I mean, I saw that technique from Bear McCurry he, on his Black Sails um, main titles, choir stuff, like his, his vo vocal work. Like one of the guys there were, were saying that um, you you use the syllables, the, the consonants of each word, um, place it, like go right up to the mic and have as much syllabance as possible and then put it through reverb and it sounds like a football field of people. That's what he was saying. Um, so yeah, maybe that technique, uh, well, that, that technique is very, very good and I, I haven't utilized it properly, but I want to and that's, this library's really inspiring me to do that. Anyway, noises. Um, so these are breaths. They're very quiet, so what I'll do is I'll just boost it up so you can hear it. Yeah, okay. So that's very helpful for for um placing in between notes and syllables. Um like like I, I was I was saying with the morph ones how when you play a note it stops eventually. So it stops eventually, and then you can place one of those noises in, and then re-trigger it again. Incredible. So yeah, that's that's this first patch. This is just one patch. Oh my god! All right, let's move on to Alto. And maybe we can load both of these at once and try out try out some of these. So it looks like the articulations match together, like the Noah, the Kuru, uh, the vowel morph. There might be, okay, this is new, the vowel morph short. Get over how beautiful that is. <laughs> That's exquisite. I just love the the intonation with the low notes and how equal they are and how 
how um how they interact they do sound peculiarly um beautiful there's so much unique style in this jeez anyway Two five ones. That's 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 cool. So same issue with the staccatos is that they're like a sixteenth out. Um, I don't know why they like that. Unless I'm missing something, but reset after a thousand milliseconds. Hmm. Okay, maybe there is a way you can fix that in in the player. I I don't know, but. That's just a bit of information, though, for this, is that you um, you do have, like, almost a full 16th um, delay between the note press, the, the note trigger, and the um, actual sample trigger. It just seems like the sample is the 16th uh, of silence. Um, but anyway. Again, this technique... Oh, that's really, really cool. It's quite low, actually, for a uh, for an alto. Whispers. Ah, oh, I can't get enough of that. It's touching my soul. <laughs> Consonants. Oh, it's so cool. A lot of noises. I like that. All right, let's try a. Uh, let's try the bases now. Oh, that's cool. It rearranges it into like, uh, in, in, in intelligently. Um, all right, so we have sustained. There is so much like crispy definition in there. Can you hear that? Like. Oops, I did a trigger. Whoops. Ah, go back. There we go. How soft can it get, though? I like that. I like that melody as well. Like the. With that chord, just the. Again, that nasalness. Na uh, that's not even a word. Um, that nasal quality to the sound is peculiar. Like I, I like it. I like it. Um, and it's, it's unique. It's it like because I have a lot of libraries that already do the M syllable quite nicely, um, but this has like a peak, a peak to it, like a, a sense of a different timbral elevation. We've talked about that already, but yeah. Thank you. 
Oh, it lines up. You have to be quite careful and smooth with the modulation wheel. Oh my god. That almost sounds like an analog synth. That's incredible. All right. Oh my God. Just, oh yeah, I forgot to mention this. Orchestral Tools didn't send me this library. This is just me uh, buying it and having fun with it. Um, just purely out of the fact that I, I listened to the library demos and I saw how incredibly versatile it is and I wanted to give it a try myself uh, because I found that this library um, fits the style that I seek to write in at the moment especially um anyway so yes this is actually very visceral in terms of like i'm getting a visceral reaction to how um raw this feels like if i turn off the reverb again Yeah, that's insane. That's insane. Whew. Wait, what? That's cool. Okay, I've never heard sampled vocals ever do that before. That's interesting. And if you off-axis one of the notes, you get a rhythm. That's really cool. All right. That, that again, blows my mind, dude. It's like little articulations like that, little, little secret gems within this library that you can, you can find. Oh, Mikados. Ooh, that had a little little roll. Sixteenth things again, but it's 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 good cycle of of things. If if I've if I'm missing something, by the way, because this is just a first look of me like dabbling with the library. If I've missed something that like can change the offset, um. Maybe it's one of these things or something. Um, just comment it and I'll I'll see it and I'll know. <laughs> it's all a learning experience and this is all brand new to me. So lots of fun. Um, again, these this whole thing which just makes my mind melt of how useful this is. I, I thought the first time we were seeing this was in the Modus library that's out now. Um, where they would have this technique of a slider of different intervals, but for um, like woodwinds or string intervals or articulation changes and stuff. Um, but the fact that it's got it in this is just so cool.
So, so cool. <laughs> so cool. And we got whispers. Anyway, <laughs> very cool. Ooh, this region I love. That actually has impact. <laughs> That's with the mouth and the nose. It's like you're like like you're taking a like you're having a cigarette like <laughs> breathe in and breathe out maybe not a cigarette just breathing and not why did I have to say cigarette just breathing <laughs> although it is just consonants but that's really cool I can't stop saying it's really cool but genuinely. That's, how would that sound dry? <laughs> That's really cool. And then we have noises. A lot of mouth stuff. Wow, that's just fucking amazing. I, I want to check out um, next the process stuff because that there's so much to go through oh my god they gave you so much they give you so much like it's oh my god I'm, I'm just gonna i'm not gonna show them all just because i want some of the like creative um like stumble into these patches and, and like uh what's what's the what's the word um investigation and and um curiosity to to grow um with the process stuff, like I'm happy to show, I, I showed the the raw stuff just because, um, to go through and everything. But yeah, let's go through a couple of these, um, and I also want to save a few so that I can discover them later on. All right. Interesting, I like that. That is exquisite. God damn it, orchestral tools. Why you have to be so good? I think I'm only going to be using orchestral stuff from now on. <laughs> oh my god. I'm out. That's too good. No. No. How dare you? Nope, 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 nope.
Fuck. <laughs> what the f- uh, How did- how did you even make that sound? What the actual fuck? <laughs> Apologies for swearing, but what the hell? Like, this is... Ah. That melts my mind. <laughs> okay, I need to turn down these layers now. <laughs> This is crazy. I literally have goosebumps right now. Fuck, this is so good. So useful. Again, I'm I'm legitimately speechless. This sounds like a, a flute of some kind or like a blown instrument. But you can hear its vocals in a way, like the artifact of vocals are coming through still, but it's something else. Jesus. So that's a, that's a little sample of some of those drones, which just... Oh. Wait, did these have multi... No, they didn't. Okay. I, thought... I wasn't sure about that. So the textures have different articulations. This reminds me of the C soundtrack. That's so cool. That's so cool. Gushing over this. That's how useful this is. I've legitimately been searching for sounds like this. I, what I love about this is that there are there are aspects of the vocal that is coming through, but it's transformed and transcended through into into synthesis world. It's a, a exquisite. Everyone, take a shot every time I say exquisite, or, or or every time I compliment orchestral tools in this video because you'll be hammered afterwards. All right, that's that's one of them. Let's check out this one too. Oh shit. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do before before ending uh, ending the, the video um, is I'm going to load up the... Uh, maybe this patch. Um, as well as... Oh, wait, I've already got loaded. Um, as well as the... Um, string quartet the amber string quartet this one um and what i'll do i'll just put these out here for reference if you guys don't know uh, it sounds like this it goes really low so that in conjunction will be very interesting okay so Let's just write a simple, I don't know. We'll 
we'll just do like one chord every four bars. Cool. I think I pressed an E somewhere by accident. No, it didn't. Okay, cool. And then also perks of <laughs> perks of Cubase 11 means you can do this. I If someone can tell me how I can fix it so the default is an actual curve that, that instead of this, that would be grand because that would save me some time. All right. Maybe I'll add a, a bit of this delay as well because that would be kind of cool. And then we'll do the same here, maybe with a black hole as well, just because it's fun. Or maybe sort of tussle. Settle down. So, okay, that this is like really scrap and really, really sketch quick, like literally improv. But um, let's, let's uh, get these sounding, sounding good. All right. And this is a very quick demonstration of how versatile and unique the Babel, or how have you pronounce it? Babel. Studio voice textures sound in context with something else. It's to me, all right. So to me, this library is just very fast inspiration that will get you going, um, and it 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 does a lot of tricky things that solves so many problems of um, when you're programming this stuff in. It, it, it like something I was trying to uh, to explain earlier is that this library tends and, and not just this library but like modus and a bunch of new things that orchestral tools are doing is providing techniques within the mock-up world within the production world techniques that would be very difficult or very time consuming to achieve um within the door and so going off and doing these recording techniques and being able to um implement them this well is just staggeringly helpful and inspirational um inspirational to me so yeah geez i've i've been giving orchestral tools so much love in this video well deserved love because god damn bow down to them <laughs> nah. um but anyway super useful an insane amount of articulations and uh versatility um throughout the patches there's no legatos um which is which is okay because of the price range, I guess. Um, it would be nice to have some kind of feature even in the in the sign player that allows you to 
like that little legato button. I would love to turn that on for a sustain and just switch it so that it does like a, um, I mean, I don't know enough about programming, so I, I can't claim to just be like, oh, I'm just going to press a button and now it's legato. I'm sure it's way more complicated than that. However, that would be really cool because then you could transform sustain patches or tremolo patches or weird phrases and articulations and, and, um, apply a, uh, a, a sort of system of, of, um, of coded legato, um, uh, coded legato technique implemented into a, a sample like like a sustain and being able to make a monophonic and everything. So that would that would that would be really cool for the future. That's an option because then for all these libraries that have sustain patches, it it becomes way more versatile with um, the no transitions and stuff. I know it, like it's very I, I I don't even know if that's if it's possible to do this because you would normally record the note transition and have that as a sample itself. So being able to do it with code would be a bit weird. Um, but who knows? Anyway, like, like regardless of that though, um, the library was so easy to, to um, download and implement and get started straight away. So it, like with the new sign player, it's, it's incredibly versatile and um, I, I literally just don't have anything negative to say. The thing is, like, I do have things to say where, like, like the legato thing or um, the the dryness of the library, but there's justification for a lot of those things. Like, the the dryness of the library allows you, so, for example, for me to put an alter verb or a convolutionary verb or delays and weird processing on it to transform the sound and do interesting things. There's even a um, an envelope uh, uh, like an ADSR sort of thing within your um, sign player that allows you to change the attack and release settings of your sample. So that can help to um, to split up the, or like to fix the, the release if it was too sudden because it just sort of drops off into silence. Um, so it, that is actually one thing I want to point out. Like it would be nice in this library to have, um, and it's the same with the Amber library, to have a bit more of a natural release tail of the samples rather than it just drop off into silence into nothingness um because i that that's a big reason why i went to just instantly put a convolution reverb on it because i wanted to hear um the natural decay like the release of the room um and i know it was recorded in a beautiful place so i just wanted to hear it but that could be fixed easily by just bringing up the release setting of the of um the envelope i'm sure that'd be fine but Anyway, uh, I have nothing but praise and happy, great things to say about this library. Um, if you learned some stuff from this and if, if this inspired you to check out the library, I will leave a link um, in this video description where you can listen to some of the demos of the library. You can download the library, you can buy it. Um, and they're creative sound packs by Orchestra Tools, which means that they're not they're not like full orchestral libraries and stuff like that. They're a specific creative idea. Um, so that, that therefore they're, they're cheaper. Um, they're good resources that do specific, specific things masterfully. Um, that's how I would describe it. So um, yeah, that sums it up really well. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Uh, please feel free to give it a like and uh, all the normal things that every single person normally says when they do a video, like subscribe, bell notification all those things that ah, it's like who cares anymore but you still gotta say it um but yeah if you liked it i'll keep doing content like this um check out the library and uh i mean i, I do live streams on twitch.tv forward slash leon ross music uh feel free to come along and say hello uh but yeah if you liked it then um check out the library all the best thank you for watching and i will see you all in the next video